future. Web Spear is majorly used in most of the companies. Why? Because one is like the the good support from IBM. That is one major thing. Next is the uh, rate wise, cost wise, it is a little bit less when you compare with WebLogic, which is Oracle product. And then we have a uh, lot of uh, supporting tools, or you can merge with multiple other tools based on the requirement, like WebSphere, MQ, MD, Message Broker, IBM Integration Plus, uh, Transformation Extender, Portal, WSRR, BPM. So there are a the, lot of IBM tools, uh, uh, you know, uh, work uh, in, at initial level, it works with WAS, that is Vesphere Application Server. Top of that, you can integrate with many other tools, as I mentioned, like all these tools and many other tools are there which you can integrate and each, each of the tools has its own purpose. So, uh, based on the requirement, uh, it can be connected to Vesphere or integrated to with Vesphere Application Server whenever required based on the project requirement. So, as a WebSphere administrator, the major role, as I said earlier, is to install the uh, various uh, app servers and then to deploy the application, configuring the connectivity between the WebSphere application server and the database, and uh, connecting to different backends, and then installing the web server, uh, most probably in the cluster environment for load balancing. We also need a web server in place. So uh, that is kind of configuring the connectivity between the web server and the app server. So all these are and troubleshooting the issues in case you are uh, after deploying the application we are trying to access the application and we are not seeing the um, page or we are not uh, seeing anything on the page or we are seeing partially something on the page and other and we are seeing errors. So all this is kind of a uh, issues we can say we need to look into the logs and web scenario we need to troubleshoot the issues. So uh, this is a kind of Vesphere administrator role and it is one of the cool job I can say like as far as my experience I work with some uh, uh, more than 10 plus years of exp uh, no I work with uh, this kind of products and uh, uh, it was uh, really like kind of uh, interesting thing to work on and uh, let's come to the basics of what is Vesphere like Vesphere have three things like express base and network deployment and uh, regard of packaging when we say network deployment it have all almost all the features like high availability scale scalability clustering deployment manager federating the application everything it have in its uh, setup so most probably every company is that is the reason for all uh, administrator related tasks we go for vesphere application server network deployment Express and base is like uh, you cannot do all these things like clustering kind of things on that but or you can we can use it for development task uh, so that is uh, express and base so let's go with the architecture first how it looks basic architecture of which will look like this so the from the browser the, the request comes to web server. Web server can be any web server like IBM HTTP server, Sunman web server, uh, anything like uh, Sunman web server is also called as iPlanet. Then we have many other web servers. IBM IIS server that is also. So it supports almost all major uh, web servers and from the web server the request will come to the browser. Uh, from the browser the request comes to the web server. From the web, from the web server it will go to the plugin. Plugin configuration file is nothing but a XML file. This XML file is actually uh, generated in the app server and copied to the web server. So this XML file called plugin50.xml will uh, it contains uh, all the information about the app server, like what is the host of the app server, what is the IP, what is the port, uh, what is the context rules of different application whether there is a cluster or not, if there is a cluster, who are the cluster members, what is the name or what is the host name of the cluster members and uh, which algorithm it is using for transferring the uh, request to each and every cluster members. Uh, so what is the weight and whether there is a filter or not. All this information will be present in the plugin cp.xml. We can generate this file very simply by executing a simple script. Uh, which will generate this XML file. We need to copy this uh, XML file from the app server to the web server. So, 
again i'll come back go back to browser from browser it comes to web server from web server go to plugin then it goes to from uh, from this plugin or from the web server it goes to uh, the request goes to the app server in the app server level you we can have a cluster uh, or we can have or without cluster also with a single app server also things will work so here in the in this uh, architecture we see a single app server uh, so when we go, go inside the app server we have many kind of container like web container edb container so these things you will be aware of like web container take care of uh, take care of servlet jsp execution so when you say about the code we get the code either in ear format or var format ear is uh, you'll be aware of ear is enterprise archive var is web archive enterprise uh, var can contain servlet jsp html and uh, uh, jars mainly and uh, but when you go for er it can contain everything like war jar and uh, solid jsp gb spring hibernate shreds whatever it may be all java j2 ap it can take it so you we get from the developers either er or war but once we get this we need to as administrator we need to deploy this code in the uh, app server the difference you see when you do the deployment is that when you deploy war we you need to de definitely give the uh, context view. In the case of EAR, we no need to mention the context view. That is the deployment related differences. And uh, when again, let's come back to the architecture here. Uh, if you have a servlet JSP code in the ER or VAR, then uh, web container will take care of the execution of that. And then we have EGB container for taking care of execution of EGB code. We have web services engine. In case your application is trying to access any web services, then it also needs some container which should be able to understand the web services and execute it. So that is here we call it as web services engine. We have messaging engine. In case we are writing any JMS code or there is a JMS code already present in the application, so for taking care of that uh, will be taken care by the messaging engine. Uh, and also there is a uh, advanced thing for that we also call it a J jmx java messaging extension so in case that code is there then jmx thing will take care of that part then we have dynamic catch dynamic catch is like as a as you as we say a catch itself it means the catch is a common thing nowadays like which will be present in the browser the web server app server uh, even there is a separate software itself for catching the thing so here we are talking about the app server catch uh, dynamic catch is nothing but in case uh, a request is coming hitting more than once so from the second time uh, most of the information will be fetched from the catch to make the response more faster so that is dynamic catch then we have name server name server is kind of a mini LDAP you can say which stores the user ID, user ID and passwords of, of various things like uh, so that we will more uh, we will see more in the security part uh, in the security when we say security uh, about web sphere uh, obviously os level security will be there apart from that uh, the application server level security which we are talking about when we go to application server level, uh, level security uh, we say it is global security where it will take care of admin console uh, level of security application level security and uh, you can also store the user id and password of the databases to connect to the database in case you are using any backend like Cisco. We can even store that things also here. So all these uh, things uh, no comes under security. Uh, even your application may sometimes may have a security. So that also we can uh, put it here. And then we have JMX we had all seen. Uh, then we have data replication. So data replication is one of the uh, important topic. From the browser, the request is coming to web server. In the web server, you have the plugin cfg.xml. From the plugin cfg.xml, this is the cluster. Okay, so, so it is going uh, to the first cluster. The request is going to the first cluster member, then to the second cluster member, then to the third, then four. It goes like this. So two two requests in each cluster members. It is rotating. It will we call it as round robin algorithm in the Vespier case. Okay, you may you may have a backend, so it may also go to backend and it will send back the response. It will go back to the browser to the end user. Okay, so let's assume there is a uh, we had deployed an application. Say we can uh, we can take it as Gmail. Let's say Gmail. We have deployed Gmail in the uh, app server one, app server two, and app server three. Uh, say there is a user called Mr. John who has logged in his Gmail. 
Mr. John is sitting here. He, from browser, he is sitting. From the web server, it comes to plugin, then it is going back. Uh, so here we have a memory, a temporary memory, you can say, this area. Uh, and also, so what happened is, after one point of time, this is gone down uh, due to its cached or something happened to the server. So plugin will know that because it will be almost uh, always pinging with that. So once it see this server is down, it will... Uh, so usually what happens whenever a user log in into some application, there there is a thing called HTTP session maintained. Uh, so there are various ways to maintain session like URL rewriting is there, cookies is there. Uh, there are many ways. The HTTP session is the, will be one of the best, best way we can say. So uh, this session information will be uh, replicated through the next available. So the session information will be also maintained in this memory area also. So this John session information will be replicated from one server to the next available server and uh, in turn this server will send back response to the end user, Mr. John. So he will never know that one server has gone down or what is happening in the back end. Uh, he will be never aware because he is getting the response as, as expected. So this is process is called as data replication. So here the session data is replicated from one server to the another server and this is also called as uh, failover you can say uh, where uh, and a kind of a high availability where even the number of users increases or decreases or something goes wrong uh, wrong also other server is able to manage the situation so uh, when you say uh, this data replication there are uh, two types of data replication one is memory to memory replication another is uh, uh, database replication uh, memory to memory replication is something which is uh, which stores um, uh, the session data in a temporary memory and but uh, the thing is it will be more faster for the response database replication is something where this uh, session information will be stored in the uh, database but it is a little bit slower so the recommended one is session memory to memory replication because it is more faster but not safe you can say like not not safe in the sense like something goes wrong to that memory or something it is totally vanished but uh, when we say database replication uh, it will be stored in the database the session will be uh, stored in the database and retrieved from the database so that is about uh, replication